stop whatever you're doing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to experience more happiness in your life. I know what some of you are thinking. How am I going to show you more happiness? How am I going to share with you the experience of being happy when happiness isn't individual to someone's circumstances? True. Yet, there are ways to become happier that actually work. You see, the problem is that we were taught so many ways of being unhappy as children by the adults around us that now we don't know how to be happy anymore. Even worse, we are now teaching our own children our unhappy ways and we don't even know that we're doing it. You see, the problem is that our lives are so busy with things that we say we have to do that we have no time to do the things that bring us joy and happiness. And many of us have no idea that we have lost touch with and no longer even know what bring us, brings us happiness at all. I certainly understand how this could happen. I had learned so many patterns of a behavior that did not serve me and brought me unhappiness and misery. That by the time I was an adult, I had also lost touch completely with the things that brought me happiness and joy. And I was a very busy person that on the outside looked happy. But inside, I was so very sad and lonely and miserable. So miserable that one friend of mine gave me that advice that I should write over and over again repeatedly, quote, I am happy, end quote, as a way to train myself to become happy. And you know what? I did it. And I wrote it over and over and over again, quote, I am happy, end quote. And you know what happened? I got fed up. I got fed up with the assignment. I became convinced that it must be easier to actually be happy than to write about being happy for 10 minutes every day. I am happy and for it not to be true. So don't worry. What I will share with you today is not like that strategy at all. There are actual things that you can do right now that will increase your level of happiness so that you can experience happiness right away. By making a few simple changes in the way you think, you can bring more happiness into your life. So I'm sure some of you out there may be wondering and thinking, who is this lady? And why does she think she can help me be happiness when I've tried so many things for so long that have not worked? Well, I'm really glad that you are asking this question because my name is Dr. Jessica K. Hairston. I am a medical doctor. I am a psychiatrist. I am also a child psychiatrist, a double board certified that has been practicing medicine for over 20 years. And I teach people empathy as a skill. So what is so special about empathy? You may say, well, I have learned through decades of clinical practice of medicine and psychiatry, that empathy is the single most important ingredient slash skill in one's life that can bring you solace during the times of being in your worst moods and when you are in the valleys of your life. And when you practice empathy for yourself, you get to experience a deep sense of connection you get to connect with your inner self and that can bring you great happiness and joy. So I have tried um, using empathy, the skill with thousands of people, and I have seen at work excellent results. So much so that I have become inspired to share the skill of empathy with the world because people have heard of empathy, but so many people do not know how to practice empathy so that it can become a very useful and repeatable life skill that can be used to heal the deep wounds in our hearts. So how do you start? Well, there are three basic concepts that you can learn to start practicing empathy today and start your journey toward a happier, more fulfilling and successful life. And I will share with you these three basic concepts so you can get started right away. How does that sound? 
I hope <laughs> like music to your ears. I really hope so. So the first concept, concept number one is your feelings are indicators from within yourself that can tell you whether or not your core needs are getting met or not. So many of us have been taught as children to dismiss our feelings, but then we set them aside and push our feelings and thoughts, our feelings to the back corners and recesses of our mind so that we don't experience them. Yet we need our feelings to experience happiness and joy. And without access to our feelings, we become deadened to the joys and wonders and memorable moments of life. All those things that used to be alive in us as children, we lock away. So now, not only do we need our feelings, we need to use our feelings productively to guide us to our happiness. So concept number one is that our feelings are very valuable indicators from within us that tell us whether or not our needs are being met. So concept number two builds upon this. Concept number two is that when our needs are not met, we experience dissatisfaction and pain. However, when our needs are met, we experience great satisfaction. And that satisfaction leads to contentment. And greater satisfaction leads to happiness. So before we can become happy, it is necessary for our needs to be satisfied. So how do we become satisfied? We become satisfied when we begin to meet our needs. This is concept number two, learning to meet our needs. Concept number three, it is a really important one, which also builds on one and two. And that concept number three is our feelings are different than our thoughts. Have you ever thought about that? Your feelings are different than your thoughts and your beliefs. So you see, we may have beliefs about ourselves, about the people we love, about our family, our friends, our children, our jobs. We have so many thoughts and beliefs about our community, about the greater world. Yet, none of these beliefs or thoughts are actually our feelings. They're not indicators of what will satisfy us at all. Our feelings are those indicators. That's concept number one. So with concept number three, we learn that our thoughts and feelings are different. So we have been taught to believe that what we think is also how we feel. And that's not true. So that somehow or other that they're the same and they're actually not the same at all. You see, our thoughts can tell us a certain story that's actually not true and it's not connected to the way we're feeling at all. See, let me explain that our, that our feelings are different from our thoughts that generate it. And what we focus on grows. And so when we focus on our thoughts, then we do not actually address our feelings. And if we do not address our feelings, then we're not addressing our needs. So let me give you an example. You see, I can have thoughts about how others see me and view me in the world. And that will, these sets of thoughts will develop a belief. So I can have a belief, you know, I can have a belief that John doesn't really like me and has never liked me anyway. That's a pretty negative thought. However, if I keep thinking this thought, not only will I think that John doesn't like me and has not never liked me, I will also begin to spread that thought to other parts of my world uh, and it becomes a belief. So then I can start thinking that, you know what, Jill never liked me either. And so if I begin to think these thoughts, I can convince myself that these thoughts are true when they're actually not at all. And if I start thinking that these thoughts are true, because these are really miserable and negative thoughts, then my worldview, my perspective on life becomes more and more negative. And I become more and more convinced that what I'm thinking may be true. And so then I develop and internalize a negative opinion of myself, 
I internalize, I would be internalizing a negative opinion of John and a negative opinion of Jill and things would get negative pretty quickly. You see how this happened? I'm sure you haven't done that, but I know many people who do. So bear with me because we're going to get to the good part. The thing is, if we focus on the thoughts, then we just focus on what we're thinking over and over and we don't actually investigate what our actually feelings are. Let me share with you some of the thoughts or the feelings associated with those thoughts. You see, the feelings associated with those thoughts are actually a deep level of personal hurt and pain and sadness and loneliness. A loneliness due to, you know, a perceived rejection. And that sadness is actually what we need to focus on. These are our actual feelings behind our thoughts. The feelings that we don't want to deal with is that pain, is that hurt, that sadness, that disappointment, that loneliness, that emptiness. You see, when you begin to acknowledge the feelings, then, okay, we can say, okay, where are these feelings coming from? And behind those feelings are needs. And when you satisfy the needs the needs for friendship, the needs for companionship, the needs for fun, the needs for belonging, the needs for community. When you identify those needs, you can actually solve the problems associated with those needs. And when you solve the problem of your needs, it's at that moment that you get to experience happiness. It's at that moment when you actually solve the problem of your needs. When you solve the problems of your needs, you get relief from that burning pain of loneliness, that burning pain of sadness, that, bo that burning pain of emptiness, that hollowness. That problem actually begins to be solved. And you get to experience a great sense of relief, just absolute relief. And from that relief, as you solve the problem of your needs, the satisfaction inside you begins to grow. And from that feeling of satisfaction and contentment, the next step is happiness. Because your needs are being met, your problems are being solved, and you get to experience true happiness because you're connecting with yourself. And eventually, you'll get to connect with the people who are helping you solve your problems. It is an amazing experience that I really would like to share with you all. Because it just takes years and years and years of weight off your shoulders. You see, these problems of your needs, for some of you, they were solved to some degree as childhood. And many of you not. So this is where we need to go in adulthood how to solve that problem of our needs. And we do this by working back backwards from our feelings. You see, as I told you in concept number one, it's our feelings that indicate to us whether or not our needs are being met. And our feelings are very important, absolutely necessary for that reason. So working backwards uh, to undo the misery that we are experiencing, it will look like this. Our beliefs, our thinking, uh, our beliefs are coming from our thoughts. So if we have unhappy and miserable beliefs, that's because we have un unhappy and miserable thoughts, negative thoughts. So we have negative thoughts and our negative thoughts are attached to really f to deep feelings underneath. And those feelings are indicator of our emotional pain. And that emotional pain is attached to our needs, our needs that are not being met. You see, these painful feelings are indicators that your needs are not being met. So the actual question is, what are these needs? And that, my friends, when you ask yourself, what are these needs? That is empathy for yourself. This is a mystery box of happiness. You need to have empathy for yourself, which is why I teach empathy as a life skill, because you need this skill in your, 
uh, in your toolbox of how to investigate and acknowledge and solve the problem of your needs. See, if you begin meeting your needs, then you can experience first relief. And then once you begin experiencing that relief, then you can experience satisfaction. And if you continue to learn about your needs and meet your needs and grow, then you're from your needs and fulfilling your needs, then you will experience happiness. Happiness. What I do is I teach this simple proven method of how to meet your needs, how to experience greater happiness in your life and how to become uh, begin opening this awareness and self-connection inner connection with yourself so that you can develop that happiness from within that happiness that becomes untouchable not just temporary but untouchable i learn these methods of empathy and connection um, from great teachers and mentors in my life. And now I am sharing this today with you, this opportunity. You see, I am an empathy mentor. I teach people empathy as a skill. And I would be more than happy to share with you and to teach you step by step by step the secrets to becoming happy. If what I'm sharing with you right now generates any type of desire to know more and to learn more and to experience more happiness in your life, then right now, take a moment and click the link below. Click the link below and join an empathy community where in that community, I go in and I teach and I give, uh, I offer videos, video after video after video each week that shares with you step by step how to increase your happiness, how to meet your needs, how to meet your needs associated with health, how to meet your needs associated with happiness, and how to sh meet your needs associated with wealth building. You see, these three go hand in hand. These videos each week will share with you tips, strategies, methods, and ways of connecting with yourself so you can experience greater joy and happiness. Be sure to click the link below. Don't wait for any other moment. Don't wait for any other time because now is the time for you to actually access more and more happiness in your life. This is your season. This is the period of life that is meant for you to grow as a person. Because as you develop as a person, as you develop, then you will have more impact and more the impact that you want in the lives of your family and your friends and your businesses and your job. You will become more fulfilled and a happier you and a healthier you makes a better you for this world. So don't wait any longer. It's okay. We can get you past the procrastination. Just click the link below. These videos, in these videos, you will see each week how I share with you the process of becoming happier step by step by step. This, um, this community, this membership, becoming a member of this community, you click this link, you go to Patreon, there are free videos, but the more deaf learning are in monthly subscription. And that subscription is for a small fee. Right now, the minimum is $7 a month. If you can do more, there's more available for you. So this is affordable. The videos are short, five to 10 minutes. So you do have time. It does work. I've seen it. I've done it. I lived it. And I need to share this with many people, not just one-on-one -on -one in my office. This is meant for you to know and to develop within a community because that's my goal. Develop a community of people who understand the importance of empathy and who will become leaders within themselves and take this back to their communities.
You may not see that whole picture right now because right now it begins with you. It right now it begins with you making that choice to just become happy, to say, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to trust. I'm going to believe. I'm going to, I need relief from whatever it is that's oppressing me right now. I need relief from it and I'm ready to be relieved of it. I'm ready for this burden to be lifted. So I entreat you, I implore you to click the link below to take this step towards your own happiness. Really, this is meant for you right now. This is meant for you. So if you would like access to these strategies, if you would like to create more happiness and health and wealth in your life, then ultimately there's only one thing to do is to click that link below and make the most of this opportunity that is being offered to you right now. Because what you want in your life can be yours. And if you have the key to happiness, then you are unlocking everything else in your life. I thank you for your time. I thank you for becoming a part of this global empathy community just by clicking the link below. Thank you.